now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Is a card game, and it's been. This is not the first time it's been out. I'm talking about the Black Box Edition. Now, if you come here to hear me compare this to the original d version, I'm not going to do that. Um, I've talked about enough of my show in the past. Um, just real quick word is I'm not a real big fan of the starkness of this one, and the card quality is a little bit down. But that's it. Okay. Let's just talk about this. If you never heard of Gordon Rome, and you should have because I reviewed it years ago and said it was a great game back then, and the gameplay has not changed since then. Um, it's a good game. I'm going to show you a little bit of how it plays. Not everything because there's a lot of nuances to the game that you really are only going to get through playing it. And I'll be back in a moment. Let's check it out. A lot of things going on in Glory to Rome, but it all comes down to this deck of cards. And you're going to have a handful of cards in this deck. So let's take a closer look at these cards, because these cards, each card is many different things. It can be a roll, like this can be a craftsman card. It can be a type of something, it's a piece of wood. It can be worth victory points at the end of the game. Or it can be what's written here on the card. It can be a building, it can be a dock. So on your turn, and there's a leader to see who the leader of the game is, and each person is going to have a handful of cards, as well as players will start with a jack that they will have that they can uh, use as the course as, as the game progresses, and uh, it's kind of like a wild card, and each player has the opportunity to be the leader, and when you're the leader, you can play a card as the role that it is. You can say, okay, I'm going to play a laborer card. And everybody else can also play a laborer card from their hand and do the same thing you're doing, or they can think. Think is basically drawing up to five cards, or if you already have five cards, drawing a card. Now, what do the different roles do? Again, I'm not explaining everything about this game, but I just want it to be, uh, just kind of give you a general overview. The patron card here, patron cards are great because when you play a patron card, anyone who plays one can take one of these cards from the middle. And remember, when you play a card, when you're done, all the cards that you play go to the middle. So the middle will constantly be refreshed. And you take that and you will stick it here on the side under your clientele. Now, if you look here, you can see that I now have a merchant. That means in the future, when anyone plays a merchant, I can do merchant for free because I have one here. Or if I do the merchant, I can do the merchant twice. So playing the patron cards will build up your clientele. Playing the laborer card will allow you to take a card from the middle and stick it in your stockpile. Now I have basically a piece of marble here. Now, the amount of clients that you can have and the amount of stockpile is directly controlled by your influence. So you can only have two in each place at the beginning of the game, but that will change as you start building buildings. You can start a building with either an architect card or a craftsman card. And when that happens, you'll play a card from your hand and you will take a over here, basically a foundation for that card, and that foundation will tell you how many more materials. I need one more rubble to build this. So I've started building it. To continue building it, I will need to play later on Craftsman or Architect cards. Um, craftsman, craftsman cards will allow me uh, to take cards from my hand and use them to build on the building, while Architect cards will allow me to take cards that I have in my stockpile that I put there previously. Once a building has been built, Hooray! I can put it in front of me and now I can use a special ability of that building and then I will take this foundation card and stick it up here and you can see that it increases my influence. Legion, legionary cards are cards that basically you play them and you play them with another card and say I want this kind of resource and you can pull that from the middle or people next to you might have to give you cards if they have that type. And then a merchant card will allow you to take a card from your stockpile and put it into your vault. Cards in your vault can get you points at the end of the game for different merchant bonuses will give different victory points at the end of the game, whoever has the most of different resources in there. Again, the number of cards that you can have is controlled by the influence you have. So you notice I built that one building. I now have three influence, so I can have three clients, three cards in my stockpile, and three cards in my vault. 
Now, like I said, you want to build these buildings because of the special effects that they have. And there's all different effects. There's 40 different buildings here. When I do a labor action, I can take an additional material into my hand. Uh, here at the sewer, I can place order cards I use to lead or follow in my stockpile at the end of my turn. And the latrine, where you can do great thinking. I want to do before I do a thinking, before I draw cards, I can discard a card to the pool. Circus, I can play two cards of the same role as a jack. A statue is worth three victory points at the end of the game. And I can put on any site. And a catacomb, if that's built, it will end the game instantly. Now, the game will end in different ways. The game will end uh, if the draw pile runs out. The game will end if you build the catacombs. And there's a few other ways that the game will end. And in fact, I'm not even beginning to scratch the surface on the amount of different combinations that are available in this game. At the end of the game, you're going to get points equal to your influence. So the more buildings you build, the more your influence will be, plus the value of cards in your vault plus any buildings like the one I showed you that give you victory points. Now, there's a variant included in the game. Uh, it mentions here, there's some cards that you can play. Uh, some cards are included in the original version of the game, and some cards are included in a more vicious version of the game. Republic Romana uh, is the friendly version of the game. Imperium Romana is a much more cutthroat version of the game. So you have to put some cards in and there's some minor differences. And there's also uh, included in the boxes a Board Game Geek, an unofficial expansion, which hasn't been play tested, but you can try those things out too. So this is how, again, please don't use this as a way to learn the game. This was just kind of a quick overview of how the game works. Glory to Rome is so fascinating because there's so many different ways to play it. Uh, I mean, a lot of it depends on what buildings you get. But then, which roles are you going to do? Is it good to do patron quickly to get a whole bunch of roles over there in a the side, which lets you, you leech off other people? Or should you get as, as many materials as you can to get the buildings out as fast as you can so that you can start storing goods before other people? And when you get a building, that will determine your strategy. There's some really powerful combinations. And when you first play the game, you will likely be overwhelmed. There are many games that I am insistent that they should be friendly to the player on the first play. And you should, you, when you're done with the first game, you should go, oh, okay, uh, let's play it again and I'll do better next time. When you finish your first game of Glory to Rome, you'll go, oh, okay, um, you know, I think I finally understand how to play. <laughs> and, and so, I mean, this is a game that's hard for me to explain to you. I almost have to teach you to play it. And I, I really, am, I'm almost afraid that people are going to say, well, you, you didn't say this rule, you didn't say that rule. Yeah, I know. I didn't cover all the little rules. But the, I mean, don't get me wrong. The game itself isn't complicated. It's just that it's not intuitive. And once you learn to play it, you're like, oh. And you're like, wait a minute, this is kind of like... Uh, Race for the Galaxy and these other games. Yeah, but this one was around before deck building, before all these other things, and, and, and it, it's neat um, because there's just so many different options and so many different ways to play. You'll play and then you'll be like, wait a minute, this is totally unbalanced. Well, no, it's not unbalanced, but you didn't know how to counter it or how to work around that. There certainly is interaction, not tons of interaction, but there's some, especially with those legionaries in the game, and then once different buildings get built. But in so watching how other people play their cards, you say, oh, you played that card? Ah, you know, sometimes I forget, you know, when I started playing games when some of my viewers have. So some of you may have played Eminent Domain and not played this game. And if you, that, that's true, you'll be like, this is kind of like Eminent Domain. Well, yeah, Eminent Domain, one of its mechanics is a kind of pulled from the Republic, I mean, glory to Rome, because it's a good mechanic. Because you're constantly watching what everyone else does to say, okay, you're playing that card now, well, then I'm going to play this one. And so uh, there's not a lot of downtime in the game. Everyone's turn, you're thinking, can I play along this turn? No? Okay, well, I'll draw a card and I'll get ready for the next turn and see what I can do. And cards that I throw in the middle haphazardly might be cards that someone else will pick up and use to their great advantage, so I have to be careful of that too. All in all, a fascinating game. I really think you could play it a hundred times and never and, and still be learning how to do better at it as time goes by. It's not one that I play all the time anymore, uh, but it is one that when I do play it, I get a big kick out of it. Glory to Rome. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Shut the door!
That's right. Shut it. Yeah. Yeah.